who might be missing today, if, we, if you want to share the recording, you'll be able to. Um, but Ellen has been helping to keep the group really up to date on where Mahara is heading. In fact, she's, she wanted me to share with the group that she's heading out to New Zealand the beginning of November to actually talk with the developers of Mahara. So I think it's great to keep uh, Ellen informed about our schools and our issues and needs with Mahara because she's really got her finger on the pulse. She re recently published a Mahara 1.4 cookbook. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but um, it's, it's, it's a, great, uh, a great help to all of us using Mahara. Uh, so I'm hoping we can plan more sessions like this throughout the year and even work jointly, um, perhaps on some smaller initiatives and maybe even some pre presentations together. I know a number of you attend ABLE, uh, which is the uh, annual international ePortfolio conference in Boston in July, and I was hoping that maybe uh, a group of us from, the, from this group could present together next year. So I'd be interested in um, working on that. If any of you would be too, let me know. Uh, and possible grant collaborations is, is also a possibility. And in the meantime, I'm hoping we might be able to meet up in person if any of us are attending other ePortfolio slash instructional tech meetings throughout the year. I'll be at Educause next week in case any of you will be there. Um, perhaps some of you will be at AAC and U in January. So if we can stay together both virtually and in person, that would be great. So our goals for today's, that's a little background on MUG, but our goals for today's meeting are to welcome our new members and uh, to hear an update from each of you, um, and this can be really informal. I know some people have slides and some people don't. Um, that's fine. If you want to show us any portfolio from your school, that's great. We want to hear about your work with Mahara, and, um, and we'll share with you a little bit about what we're doing as well at PACE. So with that, um, I think I'll turn this over to Keith. Um, we're asking everyone, if you just joined us, to take a moment to type in the chat box, a, a, you know, a little bit more about yourself, uh, where you're from, and uh, I think Keith will explain to us how Adobe Connect is, is going to be used for this meeting. Uh, thanks, Beth. Um, we're basically going to use two, uh, two layouts for the meeting. Most of the time we'll be in this discussion layout, and so those of us who are actually reporting out from the different schools would have the ability in this video part of the screen to you know, bring up our, our webcam and um, and just uh, talk. We've got the chat window that's available to everyone, and um, you know that's a good good place to have the conversation going on as well. I've put up the agenda that Sam and Beth uh, sent out in the discussion notes. Um, we've got the list of attendees and the the poll that uh, kept getting reset. Um, when we do need to switch over and someone is going to do some sharing, either um, of uh, some slides if, they, if they've been loaded up or their desktop, I'll switch briefly over into this layout, which provides a much larger part of the screen for sharing those, um, those slides. Other than that, I think it's Pretty straightforward. It looks like we've got a bunch of people in. It looks like a great group, um, and um, you know, just like I say, chat away, and uh, we'll go through the through the agenda. Beth, back to you. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like, if we could, um, I think it might make sense to. We had scheduled time for introductions, but I kind of I'm, I'm pleased with how the introductions are proceeding. Um, through the chat area. So I'm thinking we'll kind of condense our introductions and updates from the schools and just allow each school uh, a few minutes to um, introduce yourself and give your update about how ePortfolios is going for you. Uh, and if it's okay, since you know I started the meeting from Pace, maybe we'll, we'll start with Albertus Magnus and Pace will uh, go at the end just in case we, we run short on time. It's okay with my Pace colleagues, uh, Sam and Linda, that's, that's what we'll do. So we'll, we'll start with Albertus Magnus, and we're, we're sad that we don't have Garrett with his here today because, again, he's been one of the leaders of this group, but we do have his colleagues, uh, David and Steve, and I know they don't have a webcam, but I'm hoping they can provide um, some information about how, um, how it's going for them, and, and I'm really interested in how you're mm -hmm. using ePortfolios with your first-year programs. I believe you were doing some good work with that this year. 
If, if you don't have a webcam, you can still use a microphone on your computer if you've got a mic. Uh, there should be an icon at the top of the screen for turning your mic on and off. So um, let us know if you can do that. Oh, I can't believe Hello? Kevin? Um, we're, we're, I guess we're checking in with uh, David and Steve from Albertus Magnus. Oh, yeah, I see them typing. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, we can. Yes. Okay, good. So this is David, and Steve's here as well. Hello. And um, we don't have a camera, but we have our mic here. Um, so just some quick updates from our end. Uh, we've been using Mahara with our freshman students since beginning of September. And um, currently what we have is we have a freshman seminar class that's being taught by Garrett and a couple other instructors. And they are essentially working with students understanding the philosophy of the e-portfolio. Why are we using it with them? You know, what does it mean for them as far as reflection in their current studies go, and then even beyond life at Albertus, how can they use this e-portfolio in their professional career? So that's a um, freshman seminar that's going on through this semester and next semester as well. And then sort of behind the scenes, I've done some work training faculty on how to use the portfolio as well. So the idea is that the faculty will, you know, find ways to, to work reflection into some of their current assignments for those students. And at the same time, the faculty can support it philosophically by having their own portfolios online as well. So it's been an approach to teach the students how and why and teach the faculty how and why as well. Um, and then Steve and I, obviously, as part of the ITS team, support uh, students and faculty when they have technical issues and making sure that the, uh, the software is working the way that the faculty and students need it to. That's, I could keep going that's if great. you'd like, you if that's oh, enough. No, I'm, <laughs> yeah, it's hard without seeing you. I'm not sure if you're pausing or uh, yeah. opening up to, for the next comment, but thank you so much. Um, sounds like you've made a lot of progress in a relatively short amount of time. Yeah, so far so good. I mean, I think it's been well received, and I think some of it is, you know, we assumed that a lot of it would be intuitive for the students, and I think mm -hmm. we're starting to find that it's not as intuitive as we might have expected. Um, so there's been a lot of, um, you know, sort of dis process of discovery at the same time that we're, we're doing the process of implementation. So I love that. That's exactly what's happening here. Process of discovery. <laughs> a lot of that. <laughs> Thank yeah, you I both just, so much. I just wrote a question, and I guess you answered it as I was typing it, <laughs> about how, how, how difficult has the learning curve been in terms of the technology? Faculty and students need um, a lot of support. Yeah, I think, um, you know, in the beginning, and I would defer to Garrett if you were here a little bit, but I'll kind of speak on his behalf, that I think in the beginning they were teaching the students in a classroom setting with the idea that the students would then go home and for homework work on the portfolio. And, um, you know, if the classroom assignment is let me show you how to do an RSS feed and then go home and, and insert one into your portfolio, all of a sudden we discovered students don't really know what an RSS feed is, let alone why or how to put it in their portfolio. So they've shifted and now they're making sure that they're teaching their portfolio lessons in a, in a lab setting to give students hands-on practice at the same time they're teaching them um, about how to use the, the site itself. So they, there's been some of that as we go, sort of readjusting the, um, the timeline and, and the plan for the students. But I think Steve's going to weigh in here too, so hold on. Yeah, and, and what we're really treating this um, this first semester of real uh, of extended use of Mahara as still a pilot. Um, we had one or two classes who started to use it last year, but that was that was really very very uh, experimental. We've all understand and are committed to treating this as a pilot and making the adjustments on the fly as we go. Um, but we're also finding that the faculty are starting to talk to each other and we're getting some more requests of, ooh, that would be great for my class. And <laughs> we're struggling a little bit with that um, 
really not being ready to extend it beyond the pilot phase, but also having the, the greater interest in using it, which, which is, I think, probably the best of both. Yeah. Did we answer your question? Well, well, oh, yeah, well said. Yes, I think a lot of us uh, are in a similar situation, kind of a perpetual pilot mode, learning, learning as we go. <laughs> perpetual pilot, I like Thank that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's great. Okay, so um, if it's okay with you, then what we can do is kind of go through to the next uh, school group, and then, um, then we can kind of come back with everyone and have more open discussion. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to skip Empire State unless um, any of Ellen's colleagues were able to join us. I don't believe so. Oh. So uh, we will go to Keith for SUNY Purchase. Okay. Well, we're just really getting underway. We actually had um, Mahara 1.1.7 up and integrated with our Moodle system all for the last year and a half, but not really, not haven't really done anything with it. Um, we recently had the campus technology services folks set up a brand new Mahara server, just going straight to Mahara 1.4 because they were really unable, or there was something, something corrupted with our 1.17 system that it wouldn't allow the updates to uh, take place. So we're just as happy to start fresh anyway. So what's going on now? I, um, with the new server, I put out a call for a faculty who are interested in participating in a community of practice. So I've got about six or eight faculty who are interested in meeting um, several times this semester to talk about how they would incorporate portfolios into their courses. You know, we'll provide some hands-on um, um, training for them. And uh, so I'm hoping, hoping that will kind of jumpstart the instructional use of, um, of the portfolios. We've had some faculty who um, used Mahara, the old version, for their faculty review. That was kind of a pilot to see if we could take the review process online. We're still kind of evaluating whether that worked or not. And then I've been invited by the Career Center to do a presentation on Mahara for their um, grad month presentations. So I'll do kind of a, a broad overview, and then that we'll have uh, ability for students to have sign up for hands-on sessions uh, if they want to actually use Port Mahara to um, to put together their portfolio for um, grad school or seeking jobs or whatever. So that's that's pretty much where we're at with Mahara. Just really kind of getting underway at this point. That's great, Keith. Uh, I'd really, um, I'd love it if our, if your community of practice could get together with our <laughs> teaching circle faculty. And if we could find some way yeah. to get them together uh, physically or virtually, I think um, we'd be able to spark some good, good ideas. And also, um, like to follow up with you more maybe afterwards about your work with the career area because I think that's something we need to do more of. So maybe we can, we can speak more. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Great. So. Um, Moving, moving down our list, uh, Gerd from Germany, would you like to uh, share? I know I think you have some uh, link you wanted to share with us. Yes. Um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm really happy to, to join the group here. And uh, even though I'm really in the beginning of, of using Mahara um, at the university in Freiburg, um, we, we, we don't really have much support from um, the administration right now. Um, but we can, of course, you know, experiment and, uh, and uh, uh, try out new things, uh, but we often have to do it on our own and in our spare time and uh, 
with no uh, technical support and no money. Um, so the financial crisis really has us uh, in a tight grip, uh, as you can tell. Um, so um, um, a year and a half ago, we started with one course, uh, just as a, as a pilot, um, and introduced students to uh, um, Mahara and to what you know in the in the way we understood uh, the, the technology of Mahara, and um, and we thought we could uh, you know give students um, some tasks in terms of uh, reflective practice and and uh, writing reflectively. And uh, when we when we um, started reading the first um, entries in the in the um, portfolios, we we quickly noticed that um, um, their reflection was rather shallow, and uh, we weren't really pleased with the quality of the reflective practice in their portfolios. So what we put together uh, we put together for the second semester we put together uh, something we call a a folio quest, and I'd like to share that with you um, just to give you an idea of what that is like. And, uh, and, and we can already tell that from, from the feedback we got from our students that this folio quest really works, seems to work well for students as a point of orientation, oh, as, uh, as a point of reference for them to um, yes in their search no no feel to, free whatever you're comfortable with to, either either way is fine to 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 do to to master reflective practice um so you, you can yeah, just click yeah there you go the, um, the, the, uh, right now or should i do that later So I'm, I'm opening the uh, opening the, um, the what I call folio quest, and as you can see here, um, you know it's the uh, it's the or original web quest template uh, uh, by Don Schellenberg. Uh, you can see that down below here where I moved the cursor, and uh, and we basically use Don's uh, uh, web quest template uh, to put together. On all the information we think students need, uh, our students need, in order to do uh, to do writing as reflective practice. Um, so we have a little introduction um, to why we want to use portfolios in general and uh, and e-portfolios in specific uh, in our uh, seminars, and uh, and we give a little uh, we, we try to to make students understand that. The portfolio is not just another piece of writing they do uh, for us uh, instructors, but but more for themselves and uh, in, also as a way of of combining of, of bridging uh, one seminar with the next and uh, one uh, semester with the next, and hopefully we we'll, we we will be able in the future also to uh, work with the career center and turn uh, the uh, the college. E portfolio then into uh, some something like a um, um, an application portfolio for students to bridge the gap between college and and the professional field. Um, in the in this uh, part of the uh, Mara uh, of the uh, um, folio quest, we have um, a, um, a description of of the task arrangement uh, of all the little tasks. Um, hope students will will uh, work on throughout the semester in their e-portfolio, and, uh, and as you can see, we 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 broke it down uh, into into three different uh, larger tasks, uh, and one uh, consisting of uh, collecting and and uh, drawing information. The second task. Uh, discussing and selecting information, um, um, uh, revising information for certain for, for different aspects of their courses, and then in the third step, uh, presenting. I mean, uh, uh, developing uh, the, the, the the websites and developing the portfolio as a as a whole, and then of course portfolio uh, to a, to a specific audience. 
Um, so by, by going step by step, we, we hope to, to, to scaffold uh, reflective practice for students a little, a little better. Um, uh, we also use um, this uh, graph quite a lot uh, in order to make students understand, uh, better understand the different, what we call the different uh, phases or the different levels of reflection. Uh, so the first level of reflection would be more in a descriptive, uh, in the more in the descriptive, the descriptive area. The second level would be more in the analytical area, and then the third would be more in the evaluative assessment area, where uh, including planning, where students then, um, based on what they think they got accomplished, then make plans for the next, uh, semester or seminar. We also have tips and tricks where we give students, you know, uh, um, um, information about, you know, the, the nature of the learning process, the nature of the practice, and uh, and we link them to different uh, resources we have in the uh, college and uh, and online some some somewhere. And we we we, we ended up with this, or we 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 finished this. Um, folio quest with information for uh, faculty teaching faculty because we, we we really want to make this um, um, pilot pilot not only uh, be taught in a, in, a, in a specific course in just one course but in, in different several different other courses and so we give those uh, teaching faculty uh, information about the about the project and uh, and provide you know, also all sorts of um, um, help for them to get uh, e-portfolio-based um, seminars started themselves. Um, so with all this, we hope and teaching faculty we use this folio quest really to 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 develop a, a shared understanding of what the practice and e-portfolio is all about, and uh, and we hope. Um, and in this way, we hope to use e-portfolio work really as a means of curriculum development, and maybe in the long term also as a as a as a means of institutional development. Thank you very much. I'd be curious to hear about what percentage of uh, your students are using e-portfolios. Yeah, yeah. Questions about the maybe about the uh, about the uh, uh, yeah I think it would be helpful to hear a little bit more about that the folio quest web quest Gerd can you can you tell us a little bit more about Okay. Uh, what 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 in specific would you be interested? Uh, well, maybe I'll open it up to the group. I don't know if. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe people could. T I know not everyone has a mic, but maybe um, folks can type in the chat if they have questions. Yeah. Um, but, but I know I'm curious about: uh, is this a requirement of all of your students? Approximately, how yeah. many students are are using this? Yeah, um, yeah. We, we made it a requirement for, for, for everyone. So the the, the, the final assignment is uh, shown in the ePortfolio, and uh, and in order to get to the ePortfolio, people use the folio quest as a point of reference, as a point of orientation, uh, especially for uh, especially learning of what reflective practice is all about and how to get beyond the point of documenting, beyond the point of describing and, uh, and really use analysis and assessment also as part of reflection practice.
Okay. Uh, Garrett, if if there are specific or anyone actually in the, in the in the session, if there are specific URLs that um, relate to issues that come up that would be worth sharing, they can be put into the chat, and that would be part of the um, the record for the chat, and and we could have it as part of the recording. Okay, that's that's great. I think we we were frozen for a little bit of time, but hopefully we're back. Now Gerd's frozen. Um, maybe we'll at this point um, move on to our next school and kind of save our questions for the end. Is that is that good with everyone? Thank you so much for sharing that, Gerd. Okay. I think next on our list is University of Saskatchewan, Kevin. Hi, can you hear me all right? Yes. Good, my mic's working. Um, so I'm one of those dreaded institutional administrator types that uh, <laughs> people have to fight against in order to get their portfolio working. Um, basically, I'm the Blackboard Learn Administrator on our campus, and uh, we have on our uh, Ed College of Education, um, they've installed a Mahara system, and there's uh, instructor there, Tim Molnar, I don't know if you guys know him or not, who is uh, involved in developing a program that's going to be using e-portfolios for the entire college education program from start to finish. And so he's asked for my help in taking what they've done in the College of Education and scaling that up to a full institutional system that's available uh, for his program primarily, but also for everyone else on campus. And so my job is to work out how we can integrate Mahara with the rest of our campus systems. So how do we set up all the accounts through institutional user IDs that we already have for everybody else on the system? How do we integrate it with our campus portal and our Blackboard system, maybe using things like CAS, single sign-on authentication, things like that? Um, how do we support having 20,000 students using the Mahara system? Um, that sort of thing. And so right now I'm just interested in finding this kind of information and getting used mm -hmm. to it. I've looked at Mahara, I think it was like two or three years ago with Tim when he originally selected it for use in the College of Education and it looked pretty cool at that time. Um, one of the issues that we have right now is because we are on Blackboard Learn, we actually have the Blackboard Learn ePortfolio system as well. And when I look at Mahara and I look at Blackboard Learn, I see them as two extremes. The, the Blackboard Learn side is very well set up for the institutional tracking of information about of students tracking that they've put artifacts in that meet certain educational institutional goals and that sort of thing. On the other side, the, uh, on the Mahara one, it seems very student oriented for being able to have students put things in, but you can't track the artifacts and can't track the, uh, the, um, how well that they suit in fit institutional goal. And so I'm, I'm a little bit in between on, on how, these, how these things work. So I'm interested in things like uh, from our, how do I integrate it with our Blackboard system? How can I set it up so that if somebody does an assignment in Blackboard, they hit one button and it becomes an artifact in Mahara that they can then tie to institutional goals that are tracked in the Blackboard outcome system, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. So uh, things that I'm not sure have been actually uh, dealt with on the Mahara side yet. So, you know, that's where I'm coming from in here. I, I brought some of these questions up in the mailing list that uh, Tim had uh, uh, told me about, and I got invited to bring those issues up in this meeting as well. So, so that's me. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. I share all of those wants, <laughs> and I'm sure Keith is typing. He's probably going to say, yeah, the answer is Moodle. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're, go ahead. I mean, we're we're certainly looking to do that. We don't have that set up with Moodle. That that sort of integration set up with Moodle just yet. Um, we're also dealing with switching from or, or moving from Moodle one nine to Moodle two two one. So. I think it's at that point that we'll look in more detail at really the tight 
tight kind of integration between Moodle and Mahara, but probably not until we've, we've more switched over to Moodle 2.1. Yeah, and Elena probably can weigh in on, on the uh, Moodle Mahara integration issues as well. Oh, uh, Elena's using Moodle, Moodle and Mahara? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, it's def um Kevin, these are all good issues and ones we've been grappling with, and, and right now um, Pace doesn't really want to make that move to Moodle, so we're trying to work with Blackboard, and we've been in close contact with them, trying to get them to open up a little more, and... Uh, um, have the ability to have single sign-on and file sharing, and uh, but it's it's a work in progress. And I am happy to see more conversations about this on the Mahara.org site. And I in, even invited some of the Blackboard developers to join our meeting today, so they could hear our <laughs> our wishes in this area. But I don't I don't believe any of them joined us. But um, I definitely keep um, voicing this uh, desire, and, and it would be my hope that others would as well, um, because I think. Blackboard Approach to portfolio is very different from uh, Mahara's and even other tools out there. So I, I'm hoping there'll be some changes in the future, maybe with future versions of both tools. Right. Uh, one of the things that I'm interested in is because uh, this project is happening for the College of Education, they want to roll that out next September. Mm -hmm. And so if we go ahead with that project, then a lot of what our programmers here on at the U of S will be doing is developing a lot of this kind of integration and it depending on whether we select Mahara as the system which I think probably will and that, that that's definitely what the instructor wants um, so in that case we may be willing to contribute a lot of code back to the Mahara project um, doing this and so if we can get I've seen on the mailing list things like uh, CAS integration some people have worked on it but haven't quite gotten it working and things like that if we can work with other people if you guys know of other people we can other developers we can work with to implement a lot of those features then uh, that would be really useful um, I do know that Mahara works really well with Moodle uh, one of the things though is I would like to see Mahara work really well like separate those out so that the learning system and the e-portfolio system don't have to be tied together really closely like uh, let me rephrase that. I'd like them to be able to be tied together closely, but not dependent on any specific one uh, learning model, learning system or uh, right. something like that. Uh, I know that there are some things like IMS standards and so on for doing things like exporting portfolios and so on, and I'm not sure if Mahara supports those yet or, or not either. So there's there's issues like that that uh, I'm, I'm looking at working through. But I do like Mahara. I have, I've, I've seen it, and I, I do like what it does. Yeah, great. Thanks, Kevin. Um, we're happy to have you as part of this conversation, and perhaps we can uh, use some of the energy within this group to uh, continue these conversations about better integration um, for Mahara with other learning management systems. That'd be great. Uh, okay. Um, if there's nothing else from Kevin, unfortunately, we need to skip Plymouth State as well, I think. Again, unless Ellen sent any for of her former colleagues. Um, <laughs> But we'll, we'll look forward to updates on both institutions uh, when Ellen's at our next meeting. Do, do we have anyone here from Ottawa today? I'm not sure. I know we have some members in our Facebook group and people we invited, but I don't believe I saw anyone. So if not, um, uh, how about our friends from Alaska? Rebecca, are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Is it too loud? Should I put it a little bit less loud? You sound like you're in the next room. Very, <laughs> very close. Oh, sorry. Let, let me just let me just. Better. Yes. Okay. Well, I have to say that I'm here uh, as a, in a double nature. One, I'm a member of an e-portfolio working group, which is a committee that it was created. Um, at UAA, so we have faculty throughout all the campus working, uh, trying to implement uh, e-portfolios um, university-wide. So we are facing with uh, a lot of questions, a lot of problems, etc. One of the uh, projects we had in mind last year was to create a summer institute in which we could uh, train uh, faculty and 
basically get them in touch with e-portfolios and see how they will be willing to implement them in their programs. So that was very successful with the Summer Institute, and this is the year uh, where we, when we are doing it. We are actually now throughout the campus working on implementing e-portfolios in different programs, maths, justice, education, uh, engineering, psychology, and languages, especially uh, the Japanese program and the Spanish program. Um, we decided to do generally as a program, uh, not for all the courses, but as a program level. So um, trying to basically link the outcomes we have for our programs to uh, artifacts and reflection pieces from the students. So let's see, I'm going to try to be very organized in when explaining this to you. Uh, in this case, I'm going to talk about the Spanish program because uh, we are doing the pilot project uh, here in the department. Um, so we decided to implement it uh, as means of voluntary work or independent studies. So we have 50% of students um, completing studies in Spanish majors doing the e-portfolio. Half of that 50% are doing it as independent studies and the other ones are doing it as voluntary work. They are doing it because they want to. They have to give us their time. So, so far we, ha we created templates for the students to uh, see and to copy uh, views from the Mahara site. I'll show you in a second how it looks like the template we created for students. So, um, so far we had two technological sessions uh, in which we explained the students how to navigate with Mahara um, and explain to them the nature of e-portfolios, the educative uh, value of uh, them. Um, we have on coming two other sessions to start practicing how to reflect um, which um, artifacts are uh, appropriate for the uh, outcomes we are uh, setting as the programmatic outcomes ETC. Um, so would you like me to share more or less what we've done? I don't know if you will have questions and uh, let's see, can you see, let me see, share my screen. I don't know if, not yet, okay. Um, while this is happening, I don't know, it says your screen is being shared, but I cannot see anything. But while that is happening, I, I think I have the same kind of questions that everybody else uh, um, in the chat room. Uh, one of them is the ability to connect with learning management systems. Uh, and then we have another uh, question uh, about the possibility of um, the students to be able to bring with them the portfolios once they leave the university or they finish their studies with us. Um, Re so. Rebecca? Yes. If you, uh, if you just click on the Safari um, icon to bring up your browser, we'll be able to see what, like down in your dock. Can you see it now? It should be coming up. There we go. Okay, so um, let me guide you through a little bit. So this is just a template, and we give access to students uh, to be able to see and to copy views from this template. And I should say that it's a little bit also under construction. We are not, uh, this is not really definite, definitive, but so this is what we have. Can anybody see it? Yes. So we call yeah, it we the VA Languages, uh, it's the Spanish program, and we have the U.S. Spanish pilot program. And these are the investigators, which both of us, I'm Rebecca Maceda, Patricia Fagan cannot be here at the moment. So these are the goals of the pilot program, the purpose, so the students can actually uh, go here and then professional and personal benefits. And then we have here the implementations and expectations. And um, here we made a little bit of a diagram so they know uh, in which progression they have to work. So first they have to collect the content um, and then they have to build the portfolio and then they have to submit it to us. They have to give us access to be able to evaluate and to uh, see their 
um, then we have, for example, we give them examples of the individual profile, what it should look like, or the resume. And here, we tell them to tell us about why they want to learn Spanish, uh, the things they find difficult. So they start already reflecting even in their biography about um, <clears throat> why they're learning and how they are learning. Here we are describing the outcomes that they have to achieve. And we give them here a little bit of a template on how to reflect um, to help them a little bit to articulate their uh, reflection. And then we also give them, we always tell them that it's pretty free and they have to be also very original and think wider. But we give them here, for example, the things they could put. This is meant to be a video or audio recording. So we try to tell them that they could actually provide um, anything that uh, demonstrates that they have achieved the outcomes we want them to achieve once they finish their major in Spanish language. So we have here the different competencies, productive, receptive, perceptive. Um, so that's pretty much what we are doing so far. I don't know if you have any questions. Right? Any questions from anyone? Thanks, Rebecca, for sharing your work. Maybe people will, I think it takes time. I, there's some interesting conversations happening in the chat, so maybe people can save up their questions, and after everyone's uh, introduced, we can hopefully have a few minutes for some open discussion. But thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Uh, I, thank you. I, I'm sorry for an oversight. We left Lehigh off the agenda. So I've asked uh, Elena if she would go next. And I don't know if any of your other colleagues are with you, but Elena? Oh, you're now running away from the, here. There's Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Carly. They're running outside the door. So um, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, is my sound okay? I mean, I dropped my yes. headset before. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I was excited. I got to see, I met Keith, um, last week and he mentioned this group so I'm sorry for the uh, late edition um, but uh, I'm going to shut off my phone because that has a habit of ringing every five minutes. <laughs> um, in any event, um, Keith mentioned this group so I was excited because we started using Mahara probably about a year and a half ago um, and I actually support the College of Education but uh, I work with all the different um, divisions on campus so we're, we're looking we right now have a lot of people in the College of Education looking to use portfolios. Um, we're currently running um, 1.4, as it said, with Moodle 1.9. Keith's a little bit ahead of us with kind of the Moodle. We're testing 2.0, and our hope, right, Carly, is to go in, a, in the end of the spring to Moodle 2.0. And uh, I know somebody had said earlier uh, the want and desire to be able to have students do something in the content in the course management system and hit a button and have it move over. Um, and that's something we very, very much want. Um, having students have to do kind of the double work always decreases the, uh, the ability for them to get engaged. And my understanding from everything we've read, um, that will happen when we go to 2.0. Um, so I think we're, we're definitely excited about that. But um, we have, we, we really haven't had any problems with our server, matter of fact, um, Students log into Moodle, and then we have just a link, and their, their credentials are passed across, so they don't have to log in again. Um, we haven't done, it was interesting, um, Gerd's example of actually customizing the template. We've kind of, we haven't really gone that way of giving them a whole lot of structure. Um, I also agree with the comment about students kind of getting to that page where something's actually Ajax, and they're so used to not having freedom like that, that they stare at that blank page to actually start, um, you know, compiling their their portfolio. So we're we're trying to think of ways to lower that entry point a little bit so that um, maybe they have a template or, you know, they have something else that gives them a little bit more um, guidance when they get in there. But we have counseling psychology, school psychology, um, teaching and learning with technology. We're trying to get our special ed program. I think the piece for us is just, you know, Carly's sick of hearing me say this, but. I just really want students to be able to submit an assignment 
And if they like that, want to add that to their portfolio, that they hit a button and it and it gets transferred over. Um, and you know that that is coming. So we're also. I know somebody else mentioned uh, kind of pr promotion type materials. Um, for lack of, you know, we looked at a couple commercial systems. The problem for us is the economic constraint of um, we we had been a Blackboard school for a number of years, over a decade, and we just recently moved over to Moodle about two years ago. Um, mm -hmm. We don't regret that change at all. We've actually been very happy, um, and we were happy to kind of we've always been looking and had kind of had a couple forays with some other systems and. This just seemed to be a natural outgrowth and progression uh, if you're using Moodle. So for us, it, that was a no-brainer. Um, and again, as it sounds like many of you, we had a zero budget to uh, <laughs> to come up with a, an e-portfolio system. Right. Yeah, we have lots right. of accrediting bodies um, and places that are actually asking and requiring students to do this. And this had been done in a one-off way with a you know a website or with something on a CD or something dropped off or a booklet. Um, so you know, it's it's allowing students to kind of. I like the fact that this is these portfolios are individual to the student. They have control over the content. Um, it is not course driven, though it can be. You know, you can have setups and assignments for courses and groups, but that really students have a place to house their materials, organize their stuff. Um, there's a, a push from our uh, writing across the curriculum person, who might try and actually push that the whole university eventually gets to the point where students have to have a portfolio. Um, and that they will randomly kind of evaluate some writing and some artifacts from these portfolios at different years so they can get a sense of the writing and how that's improving or progressing through the four years um, at Lehigh. So we have a couple things. And, and tenure and promotion, we, we long had, and many of you probably have this still, um, you know, people who want to get promoted make a big binder this thick, and it gets locked in a room, and all the professors go and have to review it. Um, and they actually drove that change. It was funny. It was like it was an easy sell. I didn't come to them and say, "Hey, let's put all your tenure and promotion information in a portfolio." They said, "I'm really sick of this. I'm on sabbatical. I'm in Florida half the year. I don't want to have to come back so I can go get this key from a from a person who works from nine to three and go in and read through all my colleagues' materials and comment. Um, can we put this online?" And I was like, "Well, sure. You know, we we can try and do that." And it's actually been pretty successful. I have a meeting with our provost next week. To talk about the potential of that kind of replicating out across campus. Um, so I'll stop. I mean, that's that's kind of the stuff that what we're doing right now. And you know, if anybody else is doing some more things, you know, we'd love to uh, learn more from everyone. Thank thank you so thank much, you so Elena. Much, Elena. It sounds it like sounds a like lot of schools are coming at portfolios from the education schools. Is there an echo? No. Okay. Um, so it is interesting to hear from everyone and where this is starting and uh, the lack of dollars is what gets a lot of people to Mahara perhaps. Um, but that's, that's great. I want to make sure that we get everyone in here. Uh, uh, is there anyone else from a university uh, or K-12 setting that we haven't, that hasn't yet been introduced? I don't recognize some of the names on the list, so can you come forward if I'm forgetting someone? Should I take a si the silence as a sign that we've we've gotten to everyone except Pace? Okay. So um, uh, Samantha and Linda, um, they're okay. They're going to share. Uh, we have a PowerPoint um, that I'm sure they'll go through uh, quickly to just kind of give folks an update of um, with Mahara right now. Yes. Yes. We're, we're looking at the slides right now, Sam.
Uh, yeah, so, right, now if you go to the share my screen, yeah, okay. It'll come up in a minute. Come on. Yes. Um, I'm Samantha, and with me um, So there is actually, can everyone hear us? Okay, good. Okay, so um, we're going to start off talking about our fall updates, but first, um, because there are some new people in here, we just thought we'd show what our platform looks like first. Um, and also, um, our chat website, which Elena was just talking about, maybe we could provide some input to how people are doing it. So I guess I'm just going to start sharing my screen. Can everyone see my screen? Oh, okay. So do I need to stop that and start sharing a web browser then? Now, can you see it? Okay. Okay. Can you see? Okay. So, um, just to show you briefly what our platform is, it's highly customized. So we haven't used Nahara outside the box. We've made a lot of modifications thanks to our programmers, um, John Valentina, who's with us, and um, also Amit has been helping us with some reporting. Um, and just to give you a, a brief breakdown, we've uh, limited students and all the rest of our users, staff and faculty as well, to seven pages. So we have the introduction and also the other pages that you see here. And um, that's it. They can't create new pages. They can't delete these. Um, but we've allowed them to change the pages. So within the introduction, for example, although we've given them boxes like goals and skills that are already in place when they log in, they're free to sort of erase those and start from um, once the pages are fully up. So because we have a lot of slides, I'll get started on our slides next. Just one moment. Okay. So let's show you our slides. Okay. So um, we just have a bit of exciting data that Amit got to us about our fall, our early fall semester. Um, we captured this data on September 20th. So on and 30 days before, a total of 353 artifacts were uploaded in Mahara, and the breakdown below shows uh, 54 facts 
54 artifacts were uploaded by faculty, 16 by staff, and 283 by students. So um, within a relatively short period of time, there seems to be a pretty good amount of activity, which we are pretty excited about. And also a big topic for the fall has been e-portfolios for TAP. Um, like Lehigh, our old system in place was those big binders and people having to go to rooms to review them. Um, but this is the first semester that we're using Mahara as um, an e-portfolio platform for e-dossiers. Um, there's been a lot of preparation on this. We have a website for faculty that goes over exactly how to use um, the template that the TAP committee specified for all of the um, candidates that are going up for ePortfolio. And this screenshot is sort of a little glimpse. You can see um, it's on their academic materials page, and there are certain folders, and they upload those folders and their files on this page. Um, we're also using the group feature in Mahara heavily. Each department for the College of Arts and Sciences in our business school has their own group um, for candidates to be reviewed by their peers. And each college within the university also has their own group. So there's three different levels, the department, the college, and the overall university TAP group um, can see these e-portfolios. And then we're also starting um, our third teaching circle. Um, sorry, it's just my fault. Um, and this year, we're actually very excited. Um, it was our largest applicant pool yet. We've always sort of had funding for 20 faculty. But this year, we actually had to expand it by one. It's the first time we reached maximum capacity. So we are very excited about that. Um, sorry, that's just on. And OK, so I'm using the group feature again. We created an online group in Mahara. And we sort of built the community. So people can use uh, the old teaching circle participants and the new teaching circle participants can sort of work together. We have a forum and we posted files that are going to be useful for these faculty. Sure. Uh, our big effort this year, this is just the second year. So we started university-wide with the Mahara with the um, portfolio last fall. So this is just the second year. And, and uh, we have a lot of uh, programs, master's programs especially, I don't know if Joe Ryan is still here, who, who uh, are requiring e-portfolios. But we really would like to have students start from the freshman seminar that Curtis Magnus talked about. And we, we uh, are trying very hard to integrate the ePortfolio into University 101. And we are, we've done a lot of demos for the, for the professors. I think the same kind of problem that uh, Stephen and David talked about. You know, if we just do a demo in the classroom and talk to the students about the ePortfolio, there's yeah, thank you. Thanks, Linda and Sam. Um, I, this, I know we're at 2 really o'clock. I know some people did have to run, but um, we'd like to spend at least so a few minutes challenge. with uh, um, who we have here to open this up to questions, to comments from the group, um, or discussions about what might be interesting to do as a group going forward. I see the there's some, quite a lot of tech chat here, so um, clearly there's some, there's some topics of shared concern. But I guess we, you know, we open up the floor to anyone, um, and be nice. To, there's some people we haven't heard from, so I, I encourage you to speak up or. We're also type in trying you feel to more really, you know, in terms of uh, expanding the use of e-portfolios, really get some information, uh, as much information as we can, about the student experience. And we have, we're lucky enough to have some wonderful student e-turns, we calling them, the student. Uh, interns who are going to be doing peer-to-peer -peer interviews with students to find out exactly how, how useful the portfolio is, how, how well they understand the reflective practice uh, use, and how um, important the e-portfolio is to their, to their learning process. And we're hoping that we're going to accomplish this this semester by by completing some student interviews this fall and then into the spring and trying to 
analyze the data, see if we can get some um, good information. We're also going group. to be conducting I know it's challenging with this format, especially since we are all know each able other. To incorporate some e um, but I agree. I, I, Linda, I heard that too as a common uh, theme, and I'm wondering um, if maybe the topic of reflective practice in Mahara, maybe we make that an, a, a, kind of a future topic for a future mug meeting um, or help or perhaps spark some discussions about that in our Facebook And another program group. we're excited about is we're working it's with student, like it's student life. We're, we're for me, anyway, hard to respond quickly to a question well. about reflective pra practice. It takes time to uh, think it life through, and maybe that's what others are thinking a leadership program certificate. Uh, I think it's important, though. Um, I mean, otherwise you've just got a collection of documents, which you can do in lots of different kinds of formats. And without the reflective process uh, practice part, Without faculty and students thinking about that, uh, obviously we miss the, the big important part of this whole whole endeavor. And if anybody has any questions, or now I guess we can open up discussion and general questions. Beth is. Other comments about reflection, or does anyone have thoughts about how we can continue to communicate and work together? Would any of the various schools be interested in working on a proposal when the call comes out for ABLE? Probably by early spring, I would think that would be out. Will anyone be at Educause next week? Sorry. Do you all, does anyone here know of other, um, other institutions using Mahara or other K through 12 settings that we should uh, bring into the fold? I'm so glad that, Keith, you, uh, you invited uh, Lehigh. I guess and I'm one thing I'm really interested in is the idea of using together uh, some other, reflective uh, practices. And and, uh, those, I know um, we've reached out to people, BOCES. In the Westchester Rock and Putnam you, areas, uh, because they're interested in checking out Mahara as a possible and, um, platform and for the uh, using K twelve the settings. Uh, so we would definitely like to welcome other groups, even even how outside you going of about it, traditional uh, in colleges terms of, and universities. Um, do you have prompt questions specifically that you want students okay, to great. address? Alaska uh, K twelve. Wonderful. Students are and their report. Rebecca, if they're using Mahara or interested in Mahara, that it'd be great to have them, um, someone from that group, join join this group first in Facebook and then perhaps their next meeting because I think all of us would benefit from learning a little more about how ePortfolios might be used uh, in high school settings because then they're coming on to us um, at the college and university level. So I think that would be really fascinating. I know Ellen is very interested in that as well, too, and has done a lot of work in her former state of New Hampshire on that. And I know she's looking to take her ideas to New York next, so Keith and I and everyone else from Pace better get ready, because I think she's ready to take on the New York uh, K-12 settings and get them going with Mahara. Oh, Kevin, thank you for sharing that link. Good. I know, Keith, um, you're re re we're recording this, and I don't know if we can make this available on our Facebook. Um, yes, we can do that. I'm actually going to stop the recording so it doesn't run over. Um, yeah, I, gonna, <laughs> I know you were concerned about that, so that's fine. <laughs>